In this Power World video, I bring you 10 of the best and most powerful powers in this game. These are powers you need in your life, and they are obviously obtained through breeding. But in this video, I'll bring you the best possible ways to get the best possible passives and the best possible pals how's it going guys my name's dpj and if you do enjoy this video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more power world be sure to subscribe so these pals we will cover today are the best and most powerful pals in this game for both base working as well as fighting these are also by the way my opinion on the best yours may differ and guess what that is totally fine now ones mentioned today will for the most part require saddles too so keep that in mind. Uh, pals made for fighting will be brought to you with the best possible passives. Other means of making pals stronger attack wise will be brought to you at the end of the video. As always timestamps are down below for you to skip to said pal you are interested in. So let's start guys and first up we have a base working pal named Anubis. Quite possibly the best base working pal in the game so for me uh, this Anubis the passage you want are serious artisan conceited and work slave these are the four best work rate passives if you take luck or lucky out of the equation but that is definitely what we're going to do because obviously to breed lucky into your pals requires you to get a lucky pal which would just make in regards to my guide and you going out and getting a certain pal just more or less impossible for some players Okay, so here guys, as you can see by this brooding tree on screen now, and by the way, these brooding trees will be on screen for all of the pals I showcase today. So if we want to screenshot it for a later time or even favorite the video and come back, that's awesome. But yeah, as you can see by the tree on screen now, the passive you want here, as you can see, in regards to getting two on Celerate and two on Relaxorus can be obviously mixed. But as long as all four passives are obtained between the Celerate and the Relaxorus, you are gravy here. I personally went out and tamed a ton of Celerates and a ton of Relaxes until I just found all four passives between the two. I made mating pairs, so two passives were on each. Bred these two together, guys. Got one Celero with two passives, got one Relax with two passives, and bred these together. And that's what you want to do. Once you breed these together, guys, it guarantees you an Anubis. It's that simple. I personally have about 10 of this very variant running around all three of my bases, keeping things in tip top shape. So, yeah, so, so easy to obtain. That's why it's first, guys. A working base Anubis is one of the best powers in the entire game. Okay, so next up we have the best non-legendary power in this game in Shadowbeak. So Shadowbeak not only has his very own unique amazing skill of Divine Disaster, but Shadowbeak enhances dark attacks while mounted. So to make this power even more of a beast, you want a certain set of passives on it. Ferocious, Musclehead, Legend and Lord of the Underworld. So to start here guys, you want to head out and find yourself a Sparky with either Ferocious or Musclehead on it. Or if you are lucky, both. But you do not want any other passives here. Then go out and get yourself a Relaxorus with either of these two passives on also. Once you do, read these two together. It guarantees you a Relaxorus Lux, but you want it with Ferocious and Musclehead on with no other passives on it. That is the outcome you want here. Now guys, you want to go out and get yourself a Necromus, the legendary world boss pal. Now once you have this dude, you want to breed it with your Relaxorus Lux, as Necromus is the only pal in the game with that Lord of the Underworld passive, but he also comes with that guaranteed legend too. The outcome when you breed these will always be an Astigan, but you need the Astigan to have all four of these passives, Lord of the Underworld, Legend, Ferocious and Musclehead. Once you have obtained this, put that Astagon to a side for now. Here, go out and catch yourself a Jolt Hog, but make sure it has zero passives on it. Now, breed this with that relaxed service we started this process with. This guarantees you a Kitson. Your aim here is to have a Kitson with either no passives on it, or a passive we already have in this process, Musclehead or Ferocious. Once this is achieved, you now want to breed this Kitson with your Astagon we put aside. 
So this guarantees you that Shadow Beak, the end goal here, a Shadow Beak with a legend, Lord of the Underworld, ferocious and muscle head. So keep breeding guys until this is achieved and it is probably, actually it is, it's the best non-legendary power in the game and in some people's opinion it's probably the best pal in the game. Okay, so next up guys, we're going to create a monster in Toko Toko. So this bird type, parrot type pal is capable of nasty things, mainly because of the guaranteed exclusive skill it learns called Megaton Implode. And although this is a one time move on the go, it's devastating and really adds to your arsenal. So I decided to add it here. So the best passives for max damage here are the usual legend, ferocious and muscle head but you also want that celestial emperor. So to start here guys you want to go out and get yourself a hangu with ferocious and muscle head on it with no other passives. This can be achieved by you going out and just catching loads of these until you come across these passives and then breeding them into one hangu. Once this is achieved guys you need to now go out and catch yourself palladius. Palladius is another world boss, a legendary world boss, but this is the only way you can get that celestial emperor. And remember, because he's a legendary, he's a legendary world boss, he also comes with that legend passive too. So once you've caught him, guys, you now need to breed this with your Hangu. This guarantees you a Tombat, but here you want your Tombat to have all four of these passives, celestial emperor, legend, musclehead, and ferocious. Now once this is obtained, you want to go out and catch yourself a Robin Quill, but you need it to have zero passives on it, or if it comes with Musclehead or Ferocious, that's fine too. Once acquired, breed that Robin Quill with that Tombat we just made, and this guarantees you a Malpaca, but you need that Malpaca to have all four of these passives too, obviously. From here guys, go and get yourself a Chicopee, again, no passives on it, or if it comes with Ferocious or Musclehead, that's fine. Now breed this with that Malpaca and it guarantees you a Wooly Pop. Again, we need those passives to pass down, but once achieved, breed that Wooly Pop with that Chicopee we caught. This guarantees you a Toko Toko, which again guys, you need to have all four passives on it. And then you are good to go. Level it up to around, I think a level 20, 23. This unlocks the Megaton Implode. Take it up to a level 50, do what you gotta do, and it is one of the most powerful powers in this game. Okay, so next up guys, we have what is the most powerful pal in the game, but it is only a one hitter and its name is Gorurat. Again, much like Toko Toko, it's only a single move, a one move wonder here, but the reason being it's so powerful, it's actually probably twice as powerful as the Toko Toko we just covered, is because of this thing's partner skill. Once activated, unleashes a primal fury that increases Gorurat's attack power. Now, if you followed the path to make that Toko Toko we just went over, the process is much, much easier for you. As from this point of you having that Toko Toko, you simply need to go out and get yourself either a Tombat or a Rayhound and simply just breed these with that Toko Toko until you get that Gory Rat. If this is the path you take, make sure your Toko Toko has that Megaton Implode skill unlocked and equipped. It isn't guaranteed to pass down to your Gory Rat, but breeding a Toko Toko with this skill equipped with that Tombat or that Ray Hand will guarantee you that Gory Rat. And you obviously just want to keep breeding these until you get all four passives of Legend, Celestial Emperor, Moss Head, and Ferocious with this Megaton Implode skill. If the skill isn't already applied to that baby go rat, as soon as it comes out of that egg, it won't ever learn it. Now if you don't plan to create that Toko Toko, but want this go rat, here is the process. Go and catch a ton of fox parks until ferocious and muscle head are acquired. Your goal here is one fox parks with both these passives. So if you have to breed them together to create that perfect fox parks that we need for this video, for this guide, for this pal, do what you gotta do. Once achieved, you now need to go and breed this with that Palladius. Palladius is a world boss, which we covered earlier. If you skip to this point via timestamps, Palladius is a legendary level 50 world boss who comes with a legend and celestial emperor, very, very important to this pal build. So once you have Palladius, breed it with that Fox Parks. This will guarantee you that baby of a Rayhound, but we want that baby Rayhound to have all four passives on it. Once this is achieved, you now need to go out and get yourself a Toko Toko. 
preferably with no passives on it whatsoever. Once that's done, level that Toko Toko up until it unlocks that Megaton Implode, which I believe is around a 20 to 23. Now make sure you have the skill equipped too, and then breed that Toko Toko with that Rayhan we created. The baby is a guaranteed Gory Rat, but we are looking for that baby to have all four passives on it, uh, as well as the Megaton Implode skill. Once you achieve this through breeding, you have one of the most powerful powers in this game. Okay, so we're going to move on to three powers capable of utterly unreal things in regards to farming all rocks outside of your base. To a point where a single power, for the most part, eliminates the need for entire or farming base. So first up of the three, we have Astigan. Now this combination is capable of more or less breaking down 10 all rocks within a small vicinity with one single blow. Check this out. So the process is slightly longer than usual with this one, but it's definitely worth it. So to start guys, you need to get yourself a Grease Bolt with both Musclehead and Ferocious on it. This is best achieved by getting a Mossander and a Rayhand with these passes between them and breeding them together until that Grease Bolt is acquired. So yes, go out guys, get yourself Mossanders, get yourself Rayhands, and you want to find these two passes between them. Once this is done, breed them together and get yourself that Grease Bolt. Now you want to go out and get yourself a Relaxorus with zero passives on it or if it has Ferocious and Musclehead on it or either or, that's fine too. But yeah, once this is achieved and you have that Relaxorus, breed this with your Grisbolt. This is guarantees you that baby Orzerk, but you need that baby Orzerk to have these two passives on it, a Ferocious and Musclehead. Now what you need to go and do guys is go out and get yourself an Orzerk, catch a wild Orzerk. Reason being is we need that Lord of Lightning passive which I believe can only be found on Wild Orzerks and this is vital to this build. So once you've gone out and caught that Orzerk, this is what you need to do. You need to breed this Wild Orzerk that you just caught with the Orzerk you just bred. Obviously this guarantees you a baby Orzerk but you want the three passives on it of Lord of Lightning, Ferocious and Musclehead. And from this point guys, once you obtain this baby Ozark, you want to level this up until it unlocks that lightning strike skill. It's a guarantee to level this bad boy up until that skill is unlocked. And then make sure it is equipped to this Ozark because it's vital to this build. Now once that Ozark is ready, now breed this with our previously created Grizzbolt. This guarantees you that baby of Astigun. But again, you need the Astigon to have the three passives of Lord of Lightning, Ferocious and Musclehead. But you also want it to have that Lightning Strike skill too. If it doesn't have it at birth, it won't ever learn it. So keep going until these are obtained. From here guys, put this Astigon to her side and go and get yourself a Jet Dragon. Yes, the level 50 Legendary World Boss. Once you have this, you want to breed this with that Grease Belt we had and created earlier. This guarantees you another baby Astagon. But what you need here guys is the Astagon with that legend passive. If it comes out with Ferocious and Musclehead on it too, either of these, that's completely fine. You just want to make sure it has that legend passive on it and it doesn't have Divine Dragon on it. That's the important thing here. Once this Astagon is born, you now want to breed this with your other Astagon that we created earlier. Between the two, they have everything you need to create the ultimate Astagon, the ore farming pal. So breed away until the beast is created with all four passives of uh, Lord of Lightning, Legend, Ferocious and Musclehead and it also has that Lightning Strike skill. Level this bad boy up, do what you gotta do to make him more powerful and this thing is probably the best ore farmer in this game. There's no two which ways about that. Okay so next up guys we have another ore mining pal 99% of players completely skips over or don't know about and quite possibly could be the best in the game, even better than the Astagon that we just covered, obviously outside of base or farming. This pal is capable of breaking down multiple rocks faster than Astagon, plus the cooldown is much, much quicker, and he's a lot easier to breed too. Well, I say a lot easier, he's just easier to breed. So the pal is Mammarest. So yeah, so what you need on his pal is Earth Emperor, Legend, Ferocious, and Musclehead. So to start, we want to get ourselves a Dire Howl with both Ferocious and Musclehead on it. 
To do this, I recommend you going out and grabbing a load of die howls until both passives are found and then just breed them into one die howl. Once this is achieved, you want to go and get yourself Jet Dragon. Now again, Jet Dragon is at level 50 world boss. Now once you breed Jet Dragon and die howl together, it guarantees you an Anubis. But we want that Anubis to have the passives of Legend, Ferocious and Musclehead. Nothing else just these three passives. Once that's achieved, from here you want to go out and get yourself the world boss, the alpha world boss Anubis. He's the only power in the game that has the earth emperor passive. So once you've caught this world boss alpha Anubis, uh, you want to breed this with your own Anubis. The outcome will obviously be a baby Anubis, but what you want this offspring to have are all four passives of earth emperor, legend, ferocious and musclehead. Once that baby Nubis is born, put it aside and go and catch yourself a Suzaku. If you can get one with zero passives on it, that's great. But if you get one with Ferocious or Musclehead on it, that's okay too. Once achieved, breed this with your own Anubis. This guarantees you a German Tide. Passives on this don't matter as long as they don't revert outside of the four we want. Now, you want to breed this German Tide with that Suzaku. This guarantees you a Suzaku Aqua. Passives again don't matter as long as they don't refer outside of the main four. Now once you have done this guys, you want to breed that uh, Suzaku Aqua with your main Anubis. This guarantees you a Mamarest and obviously keep breeding until you land a Mamarest with all four passives on it. Earth Emperor, Legend, Musclehead and Ferocious. Once achieved, level it up and unlock that Earth Impact skill. And from this point guys, you can farm those Aurochs so so easily it's unbelievable okay so next up guys we have the dig toys the out of base dig toys the out of base all mining monster who i will admit doesn't farm as fast as astagon or mamarest as he isn't capable of taking that multiple rocks per hit but he's a quicker breed and does get to work at a rate no other player in the game can match besides astagon and mamarest so yeah for the earlier players this one could be for you now if you followed or plan to follow the path to make that mama rest, this one's super easy to do. You simply just want to go down and catch yourself a rush hour with no passives on it and breed this with your newest we made for that mama rest. This will guarantee you that dig toys. So yeah, do what you gotta do and get that dig toys. Now if you use timestamps to get to this point, let's start at the beginning. So we want that dig toys to have Earth Emperor, Legend, Ferocious and Musclehead. So to start, we want to get ourselves a dial howl with both Ferocious and Musclehead on it. To do this, again, I recommend you going out and grabbing a load of dial howls until both passives are found. Then you need to breed them into one dial howl. Once this is achieved, you now want to get yourself Jet Dragon, the legendary world boss. Now, once you have this Jet Dragon, you breed this with your dial howl. Together, it guarantees you an Anubis. But you want that Anubis to have the passives of Legend, Ferocious and Musclehead. You don't want Divine Dragon on it, just these three passives, nothing else. Once that's achieved from here, you want to go out and catch yourself the world boss, the alpha world boss of Anubis. This is the only way in the game, like I said, to get that Earth Emperor passive. So once you've caught this alpha world boss, brood this with your own Anubis. This will guarantee you an Anubis baby, but you need that Anubis baby to have all four of these passives we want on it. Uh, Earth Emperor, Legend, Ferocious and Musclehead. Once that is achieved, go out and get yourself a rush hour and make sure it has zero passives on it. Or if it has a ferocious or muscle head, that's fine. But from here, guys, it's as simple as breeding this with your Anubis and it guarantees you that dig toys. Just make sure it has all four of the passives you want on and you are good to go with the best outside of base farming dig toys in the game. Okay, so moving on, but we're sticking with dig toys here. What about the best base version of this dude? Well, that's quite easy to achieve. A dig toys with serious, conceited, work slave and artisan will work faster than any other base farming pal in this game. Probably besides the newbies we made earlier. So these four passives ain't exclusive to any pal, so it's just a matter of getting two pals, which when bred, guarantee you a dig toys which share these four passives. The easiest way, in my opinion, to do this is go out and catch yourself a ton of rush whores, and a ton of serpents until these four passives are obtained. You then obviously need to create a single rush and a single serpent which share 
these four passes between them. And it's then just breeding these two together. They guarantee you that Dig Toys Baby, but you want to keep breeding until that Dig Toys Baby comes out with all four passives on it. And it really is that simple, guys. This is the best base working Dig Toys you can get. Okay, so next up, guys, we have the amazing Quivern. Now, I built and including this one as it's a fan favorite pal, and in my opinion, Although you can go for speed, the two powers following this Quivern are all you will ever need in regards to speed. So I've decided to chuck in a fighting Quivern. Uh, also remember the partner skill on Quivern buffs uh, dragon damage upon you riding this power. So quite unique and an exclusive skill to have. So on this Quivern you want Divine Dragon, Legend, Musclehead and Ferocious. And the easiest way to do this is as follows. Firstly go out and catch yourself a cinemoth uh, you need to have the passives are ferocious and muscle head on it so catching a ton of these until these passives are found and then just breeding them into one cinemoth once that's achieved you now need to go out and catch yourself a jet dragon obviously jet dragon has that divine dragon and legend on it so it's very very important once jet dragon is obtained you want to breed this with your cinemoth this guarantees you that relaxorus but obviously you want all four passives on now once this is achieved guys you now want to head out and get yourself a nightwing but here you want one with zero passives on it or if it has ferocious or musclehead that's completely fine but once you have one breed this with your relaxorus this guarantees you that quiver from here keep on breeding until you get yourself that ultimate quiver guys with divine dragon a legend musclehead and ferocious build yourself a saddle ride this thing and destroy Ooh. okay so next up guys are the two fastest pals in the game one's a flyer one is a ground mount so firstly we have a necromus now because necromus is a legendary pal you can only breed necromus with another necromus to create another necromus there's no other ways of creating necromuses you need two parents both being necromus that's a lot of necromuses in one sentence so for you to achieve the ultimate speed stat requires a lot of reading and a lot of getting lucky. So the passives you want are Nimble, Swift, Legend and Runner. The four best movement speed passives in this game. So to do this and start this process you need to have both a male and female of this Necromus and constantly just breed these two together until these passives eventually come through. Now they will come through as random passives can come through but they just take a little time so just keep breeding guys until you find those necromuses with these passives on then just obviously try and eliminate individual passives into single passive necromuses and then breed them together to create the ultimate breeding pair and just keep on doing this until you get the ultimate necromus this is how i did this it took a lot of breeding but i did eventually get this done and the same goes to Jet Dragon. This is by far the fastest flying power in the game. The speeds you reach here are absolutely crazy. But again, it's just a case of having both a male and female of Jet Dragon because it's a legendary power. It's the only way to create it. And just breeding them together, guys, over and over until you see the four passives you want appear in those babies. Again, those are Nimble, Swift, Legend, and Runner. This is how I obtained both Jet Dragon and my Necromus. It's just a lot of breeding, a lot of getting lucky, and a lot of cakes. But I had to do what I had to do to get the two fastest pals in this game. So yes, guys, those, in my opinion, are the best pals you can get in Pal World. Now, obviously, you can make pals even better with that condensation machine, especially those pals you want to use in battle or as a base pal. To fully upgrade a said power to a 4 star in that condensation machine, it will require you to have a further 116 of the same power to condense into them. Now you can also use this statue of power if you have those power souls spare too to upgrade these powers further, both attack and that work speed, that work rate. Now in regards to fighting, there are powers in this game that if you add them to your party, they will increase a certain element attack damage. Now what does what you can see on screen now? And the more of these you have in your party, the more of an attack buff you get. Also leveling these powers up with the condensation machine further raises that buff effect. So also keep that in mind. The end game goal here is to have a party full of powers that buff that single powers attack damage all fully upgraded 
that condensation machine as well as the statue of power it takes a lot of powers a lot of cakes a lot of breeding but hey you gotta do what you gotta do to be the best and on that note guys the end of the video has arrived if you enjoyed it leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one